The Small Business Show, episode 141 for Wednesday, October 18th, 2017. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave Hamilton? I'm I'm Dave Hamilton today. Yeah. <laughs> Some days <laughs> Just that's to be good. sure everybody everybody got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Cool. Some days that's a good thing. Some days not so much. But you know, you it's a, it. today's a good yeah. Day. Yeah, right on. That's great. That's great. Uh, hey, look, I, I want to jump right into this because we have a, a a couple of guests that I'm I'm very interested in talking about. And you know, w- one of the things that I I was pleasantly surprised to learn after starting my first company many, many years ago was when my accountant said, Hey, you know, you guys are making, you know, good money here. You ought to get yourself some cars. And I said, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, yeah, it's a great write off. You could go lease, you know, a couple of cars, whatever you want. And so, you know, I was thrilled. Right. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I, I, that's one of those really nice conversations. To yeah. Have. It's yeah. a great, it's a great thing to do. So always been able to drive nice car or cars, you know, and, and I've always leased them through one of my businesses or, you know, or another, take advantage of the write off and some tax stuff. But, you know, I've been intrigued lately. You know, what if you want access to multiple vehicles, maybe a dream car, but you wanted to offset the expenses even more. And so I, I've done some research about this and, and I'm really uh, excited. We have a couple of guys here, uh, uh, Gurjeet Singh and Kevin Chow, two entrepreneurs that are running their, their small business on the Turo car rental platform. Um, welcome to the Small Business Show, guys. Hey, how's it going? It's good. It's good. Uh, it's Kevin, right? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to try to keep you track of each of you. And uh, Gurjeet, you're there. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. I'm, I'm doing great. And we're excited to talk to you about. So l- let's just kind of get started um, and give our listeners a little background on, uh, you know, I probably could figure out the why because you have such, you know, these awesome cars. And, you know, how did you get starting, started to, you know, building this fleet of cars that you uh, ran out on Turo? Uh, so this is Gurjeet. I'm going to okay. pretty much take the lead here for a little bit. Cool. Sure. Um, I think, uh, it goes back to the same kind of perspective that you guys had when you initially just want to rent a car and you figure out, you know, what it takes and you go to Hertz enterprise and you usually don't get the car that you want. And we started browsing around cause initially we wanted to go up to Tahoe and we were looking for like a four wheel drive car. And, uh, there weren't very many options cause you're not sure if you're actually going to get, you know, the car that you're, um, basically making a reservation for oh, yeah. from these like rental enterprise companies. Uh, so we were doing some research and we saw relay rides and, uh, we rented out a, I think it was like a, or we were looking to rent out a four wheel drive suburban, you know, just to take up to, to, uh, Tahoe. Sure. And I think we rented out a car one time and we recognized the potential for us to start running out our own cars and kind of having, you know, a utility vehicle that would subsidize the cost of owning ownership. So in a, in a way, like, you know, we get to take our boards, our stuff, our, our friends and family up to Tahoe for a weekend, but at the same time, the car doesn't sit idle and we make the payments when it's not in use. So I think from that perspective is like kind of where the initial thought started. Okay. But we first ventured in with two Mustangs, actually, when we. Oh, actually, sorry. My uh, friend Kevin started off with uh, a BMW. And that's when we okay. started. Yeah, because um, I initially uh, before I was doing this, I was driving for Uber and oh, all right. um, they just piloted a program called Uber Select, which is kind of in between Uber X and Uber Black. Um, it's kind of like a luxury vehicle without paying the Uber black prices. Okay. Um, and my fallback plan, if that didn't work out, was to rent it out on Turo. And it, um, so that's what I ended up doing. And the second renter I actually ended up using a fake military license and uh, stealing the car. Oh, um, no. <laughs> they found it a couple weeks. Cops found it a couple weeks later, little in Hayward. Um, repair bill ended up being about $11,000. And wow. Turo it all, so... Oh, that's, that's, that's when uh, I decided that they were a legit company, and I and I told Gurjeet about it, and uh, we decided to to start acquiring vehicles from there. So there was that's a, a, there was a quick hiccup there. You said that Turo did cover the eleven grand. Is that right? Yeah, um, it was kind of interesting. So they covered everything, and then um, I sold the car shortly afterwards. And for some reason, um, the company I sold the car 
um, with was Shift. It's kind of like the online car buying and selling platform in SF, based yep. in SF right now. Um, they ran their their um, auto check on it, and the accident didn't even show up on their end. So they listed the car as a clean title zero accident car, and actually ended up getting more than I paid for it when I wow. announced the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. That's great. That's well, awesome. and you know, it, it, so those are kind of the you know the humble beginnings. But you guys have really you know blown this thing up. Uh, yeah, how many vehicles are you managing on the platform right now? Um, so it's between me, Gurjeet, and um, a couple other friends of ours. But okay. we have about twelve vehicles right now that we're that we're managing. That's awesome. So what do you what have you found to be, you know, the most challenging part of because I look at that and I was like, oh, that's great, man. There's got to be a way I want to I'd like to drive this car and I'd like to have that and I could, you know, pay for them, you know, hopefully. Um, what's the toughest part about managing a successful, you know, car rental business? Um, a couple things. Um, first things first, the worst aspect of terror right now is uh, dealing with damage claims. Um it's always it's always fighting tooth and nail to try and try and get reimbursed with them. Um, they have really strict rules on you have to take photos twenty four hours uh, before the trip, and then you have to take photos twenty four hours within twenty four hours after the trip uh, to qualify. And if you do, if you take a photo twenty five hours later after a trip after you find out there's damage, they won't they won't pay you out. And uh, we learned that the hard way. Um, besides that. Um, I guess the second hardest thing would be just servicing all the vehicles because they all tend to, because we have a uh, high horsepower rear wheel drive cars, the rear tires and brakes tend to go out faster than your, than your regular Toyota Priuses. And <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Thinking about how people are going to drive those particular vehicles that you have will, will sort of inform your repair costs. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, and are, is, Turo, the you know the primary is it is that the exclusive platform that you're running out? Is there any other way that you're generating revenue with these vehicles? As of right now, that's the only platform that we're using to kind of secure our insurance with, uh, you know, because it becomes really difficult to track down a uh, renter's like, you know, background check with his driver's license history and whether or not they're, you know, credited enough to you know, rent a car or, sure. you know, if it's, uh, if they qualify, you know, it makes, makes sense, sense right now to use Turo as like the back end, uh, people who qualify and make sure that, okay, this renter is actually, uh, legit. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, like so it. they, they significantly limit your risk. I don't want to say they take it all, but, but they, they provide a structure where, where you can really kind of manage that risk. Exactly. And it makes it very easy. Like in case in point, although the reimbursement stuff is really difficult, if they go over miles, it's very easy to adjust and say, hey, you know, we allotted you 100 miles and you went 150 miles. That 50 miles, usually how would we get that payment once the if the, oh, yeah, the trip was already over? But through Turo, they provide an easy access because the credit card's already on file. They automatically enforce that because we have photos before and after. Sure. That's great. So, yeah. so you really, sense. you have to, it's not like you can just leave the car in a lot and, and have the next person pick it up. You've got to sort of go and check in between every single rental. No, Turo's not doing that for you. You're doing that for you. There's a few... Um, there are instances where we're allowed to use a Turo Valet service, which is currently in San Francisco and in LAX. Um, but there is a 24 hour uh, window where right. you can drop it off and pick it up. Uh, after that, they start enforcing fees for any extra days that we leave it there. So, gotcha. yes, only if they fly into San Francisco, there is that opportunity where we don't have to manage it directly, where those photos and inspection and like handoff is done without our uh, active oversight. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. How yeah. I and this is just me, you know, kind of thinking through the numbers and all that. How uh, how, how much time. What, what's the percentage of rental versus versus not rental? Like, I mean, are you able to rent these things most of the time that you want to or is it kind of fall in the middle there? So I'd say um, our average is maybe 10 to 20 days a month, um, winter being the slower months since we mostly have convertibles. Sure. And yep. Yep. And during summer, um, 20, 20 days is, is about average or uh, sometimes even more. 
but there's always going to be a, a day or two in between each rentals because of the time that one person returns it versus the time that someone picks it up. It's, sure. You don't, you don't usually get people picking the car late at night, and then you don't usually get people returning the car like in the middle of the afternoon kind of thing. Right, right. Makes sense. And, and so That's- is this... I mean, are you and we don't have to go into the numbers, but are you making money at this or is it allow you to break even? And now instead of owning one car, you've got 12 and you can drive what you want when you want. Yeah. So we've been doing this a couple of years now. Um, and I'd say each car makes about two to f- two to three times its monthly payment, um, hmm. maybe even more. Um, we've been trying to become more efficient and. Um, aggressive aggressive with the pricing and um, going over miles and things like that where when we first started off Turo used to have a flat rate fee of any mileage overage would be 75 cents per mile and um, they changed that a couple months ago after they started enforcing fees on the additional miles that they so that they get their own cut then they allowed renters to put whatever price I think from zero zero cents to to four dollars now for each additional mm-hmm. mile. Okay. That's oh, great. that's cool. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's some excellent information because I, I was curious about that too. You know, I I own vacation rentals, and often, you know, you're just trying to cover your cost and uh, but have a, a great place to go someplace, whether it's Tahoe or you know the beach, that kind of stuff. So it's it's uh, it sounds like you have a you know a growing enterprise there. That's that's really cool. Well, so. You know, you talked earlier about you partnered with a few, you know, you have some friends, uh, you know, looks like from your uh, Turo page up there that we'll link up in the show notes, you know, you've got locations, San Francisco, L.A. and Las Vegas, and you allow one way rentals uh, as well as imagine access more vehicles. Uh, How's that worked out for you? Um, that, That sounds very logistically challenging to make all that work. Yeah, so it's pretty much a lot of active management between um, me and Kevin. Uh, We have one friend that uh, rents out his car with us to our profile, but for the most part, he just uses it as a way to subsidize his cost on his car that he bought around the same time uh, that we bought ours, which was like a Jaguar F-Type 2014. It was like a V8, and we kind of told him what we were up to, and he decided to kind of go in on it and use our profile as a way to advertise his car. But for the most part, all the one-way stuff between going going to LAX or going to San Diego or Las Vegas, it's pretty much on me and Kevin where we book flights ahead of time. Once we recognize that someone is trying to do a one way, um, we'll allot the car or we'll allocate the car for that time period. And then they'll book the, the trip through Turo and we'll just make a note through our conversations in Turo that, Hey, it's a one way trip leaving at this point, uh, returning say in Las Vegas and we're going to be driving it back. And so we, me and Kevin or one of us would just drive out there or fly out there on a one way trip and then pick up the car from them at the airport. So realistically, it's not us uh, actually managing the car in those locations. We just offer like more of a trip. Like if you fly from, you know, the East Coast and you want to go from San Francisco to L.A. and just drive the one freeway, because people really like to tour California because it's such a tourist destination. Um, It allows them some flexibility if they're traveling in a bigger party to save some money or just to uh, tour California. So that kind of gives them that option. That's great. So are you charging an, uh, a fee for a one way to cover those expenses? How does that work out? Yeah, I, the fee pretty much t- uh, only covers the extra miles and um, the one way plus our time to drive the car. So realistically, okay. say we charge five hundred dollars a flight down to L.A., we can get ahead of time for like one hundred to one fifty. Uh-huh. And then it's about a five hour drive plus four hundred miles on the car. So it pretty much just evens out. It's not really um, a a money grab or a profitable, profitable like venture, but it it creates, you know, an opportunity to get more business for people who are looking to do that. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. I think that's great that, you know, you guys have come up with all these different ways to, uh, to manage this. It's really creative. And I think that's, uh, uh, that bodes well for your, you know, for your future success. Um, I think. Uh, just to add on yeah, to that, yeah. I was just going to say that it creates like a tailor-made experience for the person who's renting out the car. Because uh, for, mo- for the most part, a lot of these people are a little bit more affluent and have some flexibility in pricing. For most often when they're renting these like luxury cars, um, they're, they're looking for an experience. And if we're able to manage that so it's not as inconvenient as far as like delivery or pickup and uh, return, uh, it creates something that 
uh, other users aren't really offering because they're just doing it more in a passive sense when we're trying to actively create something for our users. That's yeah, a that's great, awesome. le- that's a great <laughs> lesson right there. Yeah. For somebody who is, um, uh, you know, targeting affluent customers, you're not fighting on price first, right? You're like you said, you're, you're offering managing an experience for them. And that that's a, that's a valuable thing to look at when you're trying to decide what kind of business to get into. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very I cool. think that was the real niche for our market that we started going up market because there's a lot of daily vehicles uh for use in Turo but when people you know don't really have the options for the renter or the person who's looking to rent uh for the most part they get filtered out like you know if they can't book right away or if they can't um, book from their location or if they couldn't get delivery i think it creates more hassle for um the for the renter and if you're targeting affluent people or like a higher up tier market they are usually not fighting the price. They're fighting convenience. They, they want the, they want to be able to do things as they please. And that's usually where we, you know, make our money. Right. 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 Yeah. It makes total sense. Yeah. That's great. So you talked about cars a little bit, you know, and I, if you look at Turo, I mean, there's tons of just, you know, normal, you know, daily drivers, cars, trucks, and all that kind of stuff. And then there's, then you kind of go into the more exotics and, and different things. Uh, have you found that there's, you know, kind of a sweet spot regarding the types of cars that you have more success renting out? Um, I think just in general, any, any car that we've, we've been interested in, uh, we're both car guys, um, always watch Top Gear and, and all the car shows. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just any, any sports car convertible will do well in the Bay Area. Um, we did a lot of, or yeah, we did a lot of research on her to see which cars were getting rented out the most before we, before we purchased any and, there was uh, some cars that we purchased where we saw that there was none available on on Turo in the Bay Area. So we decided to purchase those cars and those ended up doing really well since we have uh, pretty much zero competition. That's that's great. And are you, um, you know, buying all brand new cars or, you know, late model stuff or just kind of depend on what's what's out there? So we try to get all our cars a year or two old so that um, they, the first owner takes most of the depreciation hit. Um, sure. And then we also try and buy a lot of vehicles certified pre-owned. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of car companies now, their certified pre-owned program is better. Their warranty is better than the original factory warranty. Um, using the Jaguar F-Type as an example, I think brand new, you get maybe 36,000 miles through two years or something bumper to bumper. Um, with their certified pre-owned program, it's six years, 100,000 miles. So oh, that's um, nice. It, it doesn't make sense to buy to buy brand new at that point. No, sure. because because only one person gets to drive the brand new car. Right. Exactly. And, and this the second renter could care less. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, that's it. That's right. No, that's very cool. I, I mean, I, I'm really impressed with the, you know, the research behind it and, uh, you know, uh, using it, using the platform to really build, you know, your own business, your own car rental, you know, uh, uh, you know fleet up there. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so h- how much time do you, do you guys think that, uh, it, you know, estimate that it would take to manage your, this fleet and this business, you know, uh, uh, each week? And, and are you, do you have specific duties split up amongst yourself for, you know, how, how does it work? Cause I think you guys are doing other stuff as well. Uh, in, in addition to this, this business. So g- give us some feedback on that. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's pretty much my full-time job. Um, Gurjeet has a regular nine to five job that he was doing. And, um, because he lives in union city, it's not really close enough to the touristy busy areas, uh, in San Francisco. Um, whereas I live in Emeryville, um, where it's a lot easier for people to either Uber to my place or for me to deliver to, to SF, um, because that's where majority of renters come from. They're either flying in from SFO or they live in SF and they, they want a car to go to Napa or down to, down to Carmel or Santa Cruz for the weekend. Makes sense. No, that's great. And then are, are you like, you know, Gurjeet, are you doing certain aspects of it and then Kevin managing different things? How, how do you split those duties up? Um, for the most part, I would say that I try to help out 
I would put in maybe 10, 15 hours on the weekend from weekend from week to week, just depending upon, you know, how active or how busy our schedule is with rentals. Like if there's deliveries, it's really tough on Kevin to just go out to say, you know, San Rafael and drop off a car and then Uber all the way back. So my weekends are pretty much just allotted to, oh, what car stuff or what deliveries do we have going on? Um, and beyond that, I just try to help with like, you know, any tax stuff, any business stuff as far as like development for our business and how we want to expand and grow. That's really just between conversations that me and Kevin have, like between dinner and lunch and just kind uh-huh. of seeing what we, what we want to get next or what, how we want to grow the business even further. When, Sorry. when was the last time, like, how, how many cars have you bought this year, for example? So in 2017, yeah. how many cars have we bought? Yeah, I'm just curious, uh, I mean, just, you know. Five or six, maybe. Yeah, it's hard to keep track <laughs> yeah, after a while. <laughs> I can't keep track of dates. Of That's awesome. you're, are, are you always out there looking for deals that you think would add to your fleet if you could make the numbers work? Definitely. We're okay. also trying to um, remove cars from our fleet that we feel are yeah. coming up on an age or if they're not pro- profitable as much as they were before. Um, yeah. We've sold off like a, a Porsche Boxster and now we've upgraded to a Porsche Boxster S. Or, um, you know, we've sold off the BMW and... And um, my old Honda Pilot or 2016 uh-huh. Honda Pilot. So there are cars in our fleet that weren't as active or not as doing as well as some of the cars that we had researched and moving forward, we were trying to. So um, there's that aspect where we're trying to just keep our fleet up to date. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, just managing like any tickets or reimbursement stuff that uh, is going on between the cars and making sure that all that stuff like paperwork wise and registration and DMV, you know, fines are, you know, taken care of and we're not, you know, overdue on anything. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, so, yeah. uh, are is there a, uh, you know, a, a certain size that you want to be, or, or, I mean, so talking about future plans, uh, do you want to kind of keep where you are now? Um, or is your intention really to, you know, grow it larger, um, where do you want to be and what's, what's the plan moving forward? Uh, currently we're looking to grow and expand of course, but it has to be, it has to make sense monetarily. And we are running up into a little bit of, um, I would say, I don't know, the best way to explain is to establish our business, you need two years of business credit. And we just started it right when we opened up our business. So it's, it's coming up on two years in February. And so in order to get like a credit line to, you know, take on a new employee to manage some of our active stuff, or whether it's to get a consolidation loan to kind of bundle up the cars that we haven't paid off yet and put it into one business loan. So we don't have so many credit checks or so many credit accounts open against the cars that we're currently Mm. uh, paying off. It's we're crunching the numbers and trying to figure out, okay, what makes sense from that aspect and uh, without having a lot of experience doing this in in the market beforehand sure, uh, sure. banks are a lot more reluctant to give out loans for cars just because of how leveraged we are or versus how much experience we um are currently just trying to get so it just we're at well, that we, stage where we're at a fork almost where we're trying to figure sure, out what sure. we're going to do well, if you've, if you've not listened to this show before, we have a certain special place uh, for bankers in our, uh, you know, we, we always, <laughs> oh, uh, you, yeah, we're always uh, complaining about the, that and, uh, you know, bankers looking for a sure thing and versus, you know, uh, jumping into something new like this, that is, uh, it, it's, I'm sure it's hard to explain to them and, and they probably kind of look at you like, well, I don't know about this, you know, this kind of thing uh, when you're, when you're trying to work with them. I think um, now that all of our taxes have kind of just been, it, it took us a while to do our first years because we took us uh, an extension for the first six months. And then, you know, we did our amended K-1s. We figured out how we were going to do our pass through taxes. And now that we have like, uh, I would say, paperwork or back, uh, I would say experience on how that stuff works and being able to pass that along to the bank and have them, you know, have, okay, we have tax files, filings, and, you know, we're up to date on our car fees and our banks, or I mean, our, our loans and our, all our payments are current. I think that would be a kind of withstanding and like, uh, knowledge to pass along to them saying, Hey, you know, we are, um, competent business owners and we're looking to grow and, it just comes down to whether or not they, you know, they agree. Yeah. Yeah. Makes, right. sense. makes sense. Yeah. So now, you, you know, your car guys, I mean, do you get kind of jaded, you know, with all these, uh, you know, 
beautiful cars around or are you still you know uh, excited to jump in and go okay hey i'm going to take the vet out or the the alpha you know that kind of thing what, what you guys still love what you love driving them so i have become <laughs> um but there are still cars that we want um we are we're really eyeing a lamborghini huracan right now Nice. Uh, it's kind of out, out of our price range and we would rather have a warehouse or a property where we can actually park the car inside um it's that's another um, issue yeah. we're to right now is um i have a lot of these cars parked on the street just outside which is mm. not ideal um so we're actually looking for a property or a warehouse um closer to sfo that we could uh we could house these cars in um but yeah i mean i i always enjoy driving the cars but I mean, after after you hit over over four hundred horsepower, that's that's really too much power to use on the street. Um, I would have to say right now, my favorite car is the Tesla, just because it has autopilot. And here in the Bay Area, dealing with traffic, using autopilot is a game changer. Oh, yeah, that's great. I would also add that uh, the cars are definitely still a thrill to drive, and we enjoy them. It's when you have active management of the cars and you're using them on a day to day basis to uh, generate income. It's hard not to look at them more as a um, as an investment. Uh, yeah. I would hope that if we were able to take on an employee or two and, you know, our business grows, that it can become more of a membership type uh, feeling where you have a lot of days and then within the year you can come and rent the car and no questions asked and your your membership is already applied to the amount of days that you get and you can just pick up a car or, you know, assign it or mark it off on a calendar for the day you want to use. And for me and Kevin, that would be applied to us too. We would just give ourselves some days throughout the year that we just want to reserve it and, you know, say, we want to take our girlfriend or fiance up to Napa for a wine tasting or just, you know, just a day trip. It would be nice to have that feeling. But right now we're still in that bootstrapping process where we're trying to grow and be, you know, maximize our profits and minimize our expenses. It just makes it hard to just think of them as toys. Yeah. 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 And, and I asked that question because I've, I've found it myself in that position before, you know, where I'm at tech tech guy and i love this technology and then once i get into it and it becomes uh commerce it it changes my whole outlook where you're like ah, i just don't even want to touch this thing anymore you know? <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's interesting. once money comes in it, it becomes a feeling of how can i take advantage of this yeah. opportunity rather than how can i enjoy it and you uh, balancing that right now is just not in the cards if we're trying to grow. Yeah. I think if we were doing more of the passive thing like most of the other Turo people, it would feel like that. It wouldn't be as arduous of a task to rent out and manage. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we really appreciate you guys sharing your story. Um, you know, so what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about your and, and see the cars that you have available in your fleet? Um, so that's the problem with Turo is they don't really market too well. Um, I don't think, okay. uh, I think a lot of people that hear about Turo is either through word of mouth or. So, okay. So how, how do you, let, let, let's back up a little bit then. How, how do you guys market it then? Um, you know, how are you getting the word out about, I mean, I found you through Turo and I was doing some research and then jumped over to Facebook. I mean, are you using social media to drive people to the, to the site? I think that's the venture that we're pushing now. Um, I, I want to uh, push our market or our brand onto uh, YouTube and kind of just start talking about how you just the same way you guys have this podcast for listeners to how they can you know generate some passive income or be small business owners of themselves. I want to start pushing that platform on YouTube. So hopefully I can provide you a link for that pretty cool. soon um the other way is definitely facebook uh the gentleman's garage that's where we get a lot of messages from people who are trying to seek out more information than what they get on turo awesome. uh and uh, otherwise than that um we will have an instagram profile going forward for just just the business but currently Great. those are just the three platforms sure. sure so we'll go ahead we'll be like i said we will link to your turo uh you know uh page up there as well as on your facebook to the gentleman's garage and we really appreciate you uh, coming on and talking about it. it's. It's really an exciting new, you know, way to to you know generate revenue. And it sounds like you guys are having a good time and learning a lot and uh, pushing out, you know, taking on new things, which is great. And thank you very much. That's right. You yeah, bet. of course. Yeah, no, this was a blast. You guys, that's awesome. <laughs> Folks, check Thanks them so much, out. Guys. We'll put you a bet. link on uh, link to their Facebook page, a link to their Turo page. You can find us, businessshow.co. Keep living that charmed life. See you next week.